Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the show where we talk basketball and only basketball, NBA or March Madness. We've got an action-packed show for you guys today, so welcome in. We've got some Joel Embiid injury stuff. We've got CJ McCollum back. We've got, it was actually a one-year anniversary of the COVID-19 in the NBA. Uh, We've got some, I'm going to fill out my bracket live on this show. We've got a new owner in professional baseball LeBron James NBA star talks and owns Red Sox baseball team part of the Red Sox baseball team but first let's get to this year's front runner and MVP Joel Embiid so the other night Joel Embiid suffered a tough injury which we all thought was scary and it's tough for a guy like that because you know he was having such an amazing year and I've touched about I've touched about I've touched on this a little bit early on one of my shows where, you know, he was having one of those years, a special year, MVP year, where he kind of, it all finally started to click for him. He was kind of the guy that the Sixers thought they were getting, the trust the process guy, because we've seen glimpses of Joel being great, but not for a whole season so far. And, you know, he's battled injuries in his past before. He, it's one of his knocks is how healthy can Joel be? And it's always, you never want to see anybody get hurt. You never want to see a guy that was, especially a guy that was having an amazing season like that, go down. And it was a scary injury. Those those injuries, it's they're even scarier when they're non-contact. And it was kind of kind of like on a fall. It was a hyperextension. It's, those are always the worst because, you know, that's where kind of you see the ACLs. You see the, the Achilles. The, it's just It's just bad news all around when it's non-contact injuries. But we've got some good news. It's only a two to three week injury. The MRI shows no structural damage to the meniscus or the ACL, which is great news for the for the 76ers. You know, they go as Joel goes. And like I said, he was having an all star campaign and averaging 33 minutes a game, which was a career high. And uh, he's he's and, and he's played 31 out of 38 games for, for the Sixers this year, which is good for him. You know, he's only missed seven games, but. I want to look at the the, the 76ers. Uh, I want to see the 76ers schedule for the next two weeks. So they have the New York Knicks tonight, Tuesday night, which is going to be a tough game. New York is playing tough, and they're having they had an emotional loss last night to the Brooklyn Nets, which we'll talk about later in the show. The Milwaukee Bucks were another top team. Then they have the Sacramento Kings, who they should take care of, and then they have the New York Knicks again on Sunday. So that's the first week that Joel's you know, that's, that he's gone. So they should, they should win what one, two, three, they should win two or three games without him. I mean, Milwaukee will be a tough one without him. New York's going to be a tough one without him. Sacramento's, I don't know if they're sellers or not. Then they play Golden State Warriors who very inconsistent. And they play the Lakers, then the Clippers, Denver, that's going to be a tough stretch for them. Those three teams, Denver is kind of weird this year you don't really know what you're getting from Denver and then Cleveland Minnesota and Memphis so those are the those are two to three weeks without them it's when you have a big injury like that to your star player it's one of those things where you want to see guys like uh Ben Simmons you want to see guys like Tobias Harris you want to see guys like Danny Green and you know with their leadership with Doc Rivers I think they're in good hands Doc Rivers is a veteran coach who's Good coach. He, he's a very good coach. Uh, he has a track record. And it's one of those times where you need those guys to step up and kind of 
don't kind of float, you know, don't let the team sink. Just kind of stay. If you want to stay at 500, maybe go. You always obviously want to be above 500, but if you could stay at 500 without your best guy, that'd be best case scenario. Uh, but if you could stay afloat, kind of stay up there in the in the standings, not fall too far, I think that's the best case scenario for the 76ers. And Joel Embiid, I, you know, he's he, like I said, he was a front runner for the MVP. We hope nothing but the best for Joel and hopefully he can come back and, uh, the good news about Joel about that injury though is he walked off like I said and no structural damage to his uh, knee, which is which is Philadelphia's rejoicing. They that, that's great news and obviously he was an MVP candidate. LeBron James and the Joker are. We'll see if they emerge as leaders in, in these two weeks, two to three weeks. Uh, but for me to be honest with you, if I'm the 76ers, I kind of handle it a little bit like. The Lakers are handling Anthony Davis. Obviously, they don't, they don't have the luxury of LeBron James of being able to kind of keep them afloat, kind of you know, kind of keep them going. But you have Ben Simmons, who arguably was fighting for the team last year and kind of passed on the ropes to Joel this year for whose team it really was and kind of just want to stay afloat. But like I said, you want to let Joel take his time with this injury because this you don't want this to linger back in the postseason, especially in a season like this where you're playing so many games. Uh, you take as much time as you want, Joel, and you know get healthy. That's my biggest thing I, for these guys is stay healthy. Get Stay healthy and get as healthy as you can. Even if you have to take four, five weeks, four or five weeks, obviously it's tough. You know, you don't want to be without Joel, but I think in the long run it'll be the best if he takes as much time as he wants not as he wants is you know just as as healthy as possible so march 11th let's change the topic a little bit so march 11th we're almost a couple of days removed of the one year anniversary of it's a terrible anniversary you never want to have an anniversary like that but of the covid 19 stoppage of the nba this was one of those things where we knew about it a little bit. We didn't think it was going to be too crazy. And personally, personally, I thought, oh, wow, this is COVID-19. I wasn't, I wasn't too, to be honest with you, I wasn't the type of guy that was a little crazy about it. I really wasn't. I was, you know, kind of like, okay, it's, we have something and we're going to have to deal with it. But then I realized, oh my God, the NBA is shutting down. Oh, oh my God, the MLB is shutting down. Oh my God, professional sports are shutting down. No March Madness. This is when I was like, okay, it's time for us to buckle down. This is serious stuff. And obviously we had the Rudy Gobert stuff where he was touching all the mics the day before. And kind of, it's kind of where when the NBA started talking about it. And the next day he tests positive. That's when everyone was like, oh, Oh, that wasn't the greatest joke. That was uh, one of the tough things. And I was just reading an article not too long ago that Ramona Shelberg tweeted out. And it was a great story where the NBA kind of had to make a split decision. And in in a decision with when the Utah Jazz and the Oklahoma City Thunder were playing, they found out, like I said, Gobert tested positive And they were like, they had about 20 minutes to make a decision because the teams are warming up. They were about to tip off in Oklahoma City. And at the time, Oklahoma only had one positive case, and that was in Tulsa, which is about, I don't know, two hours away. And they thought, what do we do? And from what I remember, Adam Silver was in an Uber. Uh, the players uh, were – one of the, another big person was in a, outside their apartment on a Bluetooth call on their phone on, – in their car – so they had to make this massive decision while one was in Uber and one was on Bluetooth. And it was one of those moves where no professional team had yet to stop the season. No one had kind of done anything about it. And the NBA was kind of like, okay, we've got to do, make something happen because this could be a domino effect. This could be a huge move. Like, what do we do, right? And so they decided to postpone the game. And But the thing about it, what they what they didn't want to do was they didn't want to freak people out. Because, you know, if you tell somebody you've got a deadly – well, actually, they didn't know if it was a de- deadly virus or not. But, you know, you have to get the fans out of the arena. But how do you tell the fans out of the arena? Somebody 
Somebody said, let's just pull the fire, the fire alarm. Let's, you know, get people out as safely as possible. But they decided not to do that. So they kind of just told the fans, this game is postponed due to health and safety. Okay. And then that turned into a long, from March all the way to July, the, the bubble didn't start till July. It was one of those things where Adam Silver thought it was, hey, maybe it's maybe just a two, three week thing. The weeks went by, it was four weeks, five weeks, it was, then it was a month, and then it was two months. And then as a fan, and as a, and as a, as an organization, as a, as a league, you didn't know if there was going to be any more basketball. You kind of were like, oh my God, what what, what are we going to do? What, 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 is there going to be a season? Are we going to, are the Lakers going to be able to make their run? Or, you know, these teams are playing so great. Who's our MVP? And it was one of those times where, so much uncertainty and that's kind of what COVID-19 has been. We didn't know how much of a monster it was going to be. Uh, you know, March 11th, you were like, you didn't, you, it's crazy to think about how little we actually knew about COVID-19 and how crazy the spread was. And the wild thing about this whole thing was Adam Silver and his team were actually had, were in a meeting that day to kind of go over guidelines of, what we're going to what the NBA was going to do going forward about COVID-19 how they were going to handle it how they're going to do safety protocol how they were going to you know kind of have precautions how they were going to do this how they were going to do that and little did they know a couple hours later they were going to have to cancel their league their season or postpone I'm sorry it was one of those things that it's absolutely insane it they didn't think anything of that and all of a sudden it stops and Rudy Gobert obviously kind of uh, kind of was the first domino to fall, and then obviously we saw Do- uh, Donovan Mitchell get it, and the more players were coming out getting it, and it was one of those things where you see you're just like an average, you know, you're a fan or just a regular athlete, you see these professional athletes get it, and you're just like, wow, if these professional athletes are getting it. This thing is uh, guys are in their best shape of their lives. Guys that are, you know, at the peak of the performances, guys that do this for a living are getting it and crazy athletes. Anybody could get it, you know, and it was one of those things where the NBA was hit pretty hard with it. I remember me as a fan, I was watching. I always like to record big games and the Lakers had just beat. I'm obviously a Laker fan. The Lakers had just beat the Bucks and the Clippers in that week. So watching my Lakers kind of, end the season that way is right as they're kind of peaking and the team is coming together and everyone's playing really well. And it was tough obviously, but you know, safety first and COVID-19 was not a joke. And, and I'm glad the NBA stepped up in the way they did and kind of, we had a seat, we ended up having a season. That's what I would touch on next is so for a couple months, we really didn't know what was going to happen. The world kind of, the world kind of shut down in a sense, right? Uh, toilet paper was one of the hottest things that we could get, uh, it, it was one of those things where people were waiting in line for hand sanitizers, masks. Uh, it was a crazy time. No one really knew of anything that was happening. And the NBA was trying to do their best, What you know, their best things. They were, I remember at one point they did an NBA 2K, a NBA 2K tournament with players. And it was the first time you kind of saw players again. And, and I was so excited to see that. I was watching every game. Me as a sports fanatic, me as a sports you know, enthusiast. It was a tough time. It was a low time for me. And it was one of those things where sports are my getaway and basketball is my getaway. And it's things that, you know, make me happy. And for a lot of people that was gone. What, what do you do? You can only play so many, you can only play so much video games. You can only play so much Fortnite. You can only play so much call of duty 2k, you know, and you, we need sports in our lives. And there was a one time where we realized Oh my God, sports are so great. And you got to take, it, honestly, if anything in life, not just sports, but you got to take, you got to live life at the fullest. You kind of got to take life and enjoy it because you don't know when all these things are going to be gone. You never know. We got we got NBA basketball taken away from us in a day. We got MLBs, baseball, we got hockey, we got everything taken away from us in a day. So we've got to appreciate these things, you know, and live life, you know, to the fullest and 
you know, to stay as happy as we can. And it's one of those things where COVID was a tough time for a lot of people. And obviously we want to thank all the essential workers, all the frontline workers and all the power to them. They deserve everything. They deserve all the praise and all the people that, you know, the people that made this vaccine happen or whatnot. And, you know, just try to keep as healthy as possible. It was one of those things that it was scary, scary times. And then we saw the, like I said, we saw the NBA try to do their best. They were doing NBA, they were showing games, big games. And uh, so then you get bubble talk and then the bubble comes around, right? This is where we were like, okay, basketball's back. It was, we didn't know where the, where we were with the, with, with COVID, but then we had a test. So we were be able to, we were able to get tested. So we heard rumbles about when the NBA season was going to come back and you were hearing all a bunch of things. And at one point they didn't even know what, they didn't even have a date for us. They were just like, we don't know if it's going to happen. It might happen. Then all of a sudden we hear bubble, the NBA bubble, the most expensive bubble in the world, the most, the safest place in the world. And Adam Silver and his team deserve all the credit in their world. It was awesome what they did. It was great what they did. They showed that you could have a controlled environment with no COVID. And I want to say, and I know for a fact, they went from the second they got into the bubble. They did their quarantine for a week. Every player did a quarantine for a week. They had zero positive cases in Disney World, which was absolutely amazing. The NBA deserves all the credit in the world. They they pulled this off. They did a great job. I absolutely love the bubble. I'm a huge basketball fan, so I could watch basketball every day. We were watch. We had games at 10 a.m. You know, we had games at 12, 2, 5. It was just great. You get to see all these teams play, teams that you don't, hardly ever see. You see the the Phoenix Suns do what they did. They run. They ran the table and came up a little bit short. You know, it was one of those things where you see Jamal Murray's emergence. You're thinking this guy is a glorified superstar after the bubble. He's struggling a little bit this year, but you saw his emergence. You saw teams that you don't really see play all the time. You saw Luka Magic. You saw. It was awesome to see these guys go at it, and they kind of turned in Disney World into this, into this 2K world where it was only basketball, strictly basketball, nothing else. Uh, it was awesome to see, and I, some of the players got to go fishing. They got to play golf. They got they had all the games, but for some players it was tough, you know, because you're in the same space. So if you went to the finals, like the Lakers and the Heat did, you were there for three months. It was a, it was a long it was a long time to be in the same space because you know you, do, you couldn't see family till I think family came and not until the playoffs till the tail end. So you were just it was kind of like a. They, they called it like an AAU camp where all the players came together. They kind of bonded. They were your family. They were your support system. Sometimes the food wasn't great. You know, the players decided, you know, the first week, I remember they said during quarantine, they couldn't leave their rooms. So you got to think about when you go on vacation and you're stuck in a, not, you know, you're stuck in Disney World. And, and obviously there could be worse things, right? But you're in the middle of a pandemic and you're stuck in a room. You can only play so many video games. You can only sleep so much, and you, they wouldn't let you out. You, I think you can go on your balcony, get some fresh air, but you were stuck in your room for a week or five days, whatever whatever the quarantine period was, and they would drop food off at your place. And, and not after that, then you get in after the week, then you start training with your team. You get into playing. Uh, it was awesome to see that. And then we had some backstage guys. I know JaVale McGee had a, had a vlog. It was one of my favorite things to see how the guys would – you know, kind of go about their business. And it was awesome. It was an awesome, the bubble was awesome to me. And obviously, like I said, you become a family and got a lot of guys were golfing. Uh, Disney world is not a bad place to be, I guess. But then you talk a lot about how these players adapted to it. It was awesome because there was no travel. Everyone kind of had the same situation, no home court advantage. I think it was, you had your fans like kind of, put on a TV if you were the home team, but that was about the only home court advantage you could have. And as you know, in the NBA home court advantage is everything. If you're playing in Boston, you're playing in New York, you're playing at Staples, you're playing uh, in Denver, in mile high, Utah, wherever, you know, it's, there's always tough crowds and, and kind of in the bubble, you kind of heard the, the sneakers squeaking. You kind of heard the ball bouncing. You heard everything the players were saying. That was probably my favorite part about it. I love watching all access things and, seeing how the players think, how they talk to each other. You heard all the trash talk. You heard how the refs were 
calling their fouls. You heard them explaining why they fouled, why they didn't. Because in these packed arenas, you don't even hear anything. You know, you do, you hear maybe a fan during the free throw when it's quiet, but that's about it. You don't really hear anything. And it was awesome to see the bubble. And I thought it was there was obviously no travel for the teams. Uh, whatever team kind of came closer together, which is a, I thought was the best, ended up being the better team. And it was awesome to see. Like I said, I loved it. I hope. Obviously, I don't want anything to be like. I'd never want a pandemic like that to come hurt us like that again. But if we had another bubble situation, I wouldn't be mad at it. Maybe if more, maybe if we had fans, right? Uh, her, you never want. And I, hopefully, we never have a bubble again. Let me take that back. But it was a great situation. The NBA made it work. I thought they did a great job. I think the MLS kind of took after that, and I know baseball took a little bit a page out of their book and kind of did that in a sense also no fans and then for the world series and playoffs they kind of did a bubble situation for the teams and we're just glad to have all the sports back especially the nba and i think the nba kind of took leadership in it and very successful bubble very successful to bring everything back and i applaud adam silver for that and i thought it was great so that was a bubble situation one year anniversary of covid-19 stoppage of the nba season coming ba- coming back coming a little bit later on the show, I fill out my my March Madness bracket. I've got the other show that I told you to watch, Last Chance U Basketball. I'll be talking about that. I'll give you an NBA recap of the games that happened so far. Stay tuned in. Power rankings coming up also. Stay locked in, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be back after this brief message. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the show where we talk all basketball. Earlier in the show, we talked about the one-year anniversary in COVID-19. We talked about Joel Embiid's injury to the 76ers and how that would affect them. Later on the show, we're ta- I'm filling out my NCAA bracket for you guys. And I'll tell you what, guys, I've had some good luck in the last couple of years. I've won my last two brackets last year, 99 percentile. So listen in. I have some good strategies. Just, just, just fall, just fall, fall, trust the process, like Joel says. But first, let's get into the, this NBA. Last couple of days of the NBA, how it's gone, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my favorite show on television right now, Last Chance You. So this week, this weekend in sports, Saturday night basketball, the Knicks demolished the Thunder. Big Julius Randall, Randall triple double. The the Detroit Pistons ha- gave the New York the New York, the Brooklyn Nets a scare. Uh, that was a good game, and then we saw the Bucks beat the Wizards one twenty five to one nineteen. That was one of those games where the both both players had a triple double, and we haven't seen that in a long time with Giannis and Russell Westbrook. That that was awesome to see. Both guys kind of had a good time after the game together. the The Trailblazers held off the, the Timberwolves, which was a good game. The Mavs beat Denver huge. That was that was kind of a Denver is a weird team to me. Sometimes they play amazing basketball, then other times they just play terrible basketball. I they're they've got to get things going. Then Sunday night we had some good games. The Grizzlies beat the the Thunder beat the Grizzlies. I'm sorry, the Grizzlies have to figure something out fast. The Jazz, the number one team in the West, got beat. 
by the Warriors, 131-119. to That was a game where the Warriors looked good. They were clicking on all cylinders. The Jazz, you know, just came up a little bit short. Steph had 32. He's tough to beat when they when they go that big. The 76ers that we talked a little bit early on the show crushed the Spurs, the most under the most under the radar team in the league, beat them nice and handily. Then the Celtics, uh, poor Rockets, are getting beat up bad. T Wolves, Anthony Edwards, a big 34 points against the Trail Blazers, beat them handily. And then kind of the the bigger game on the weekend that I thought was the Pelicans against the Clippers. It was one of those games where the Clippers. <laughs> Like, I don't know how to describe the Clippers. It's one of those things where, do they have a chip on their shoulder? What's going on with the Clippers? Can you trust them in the playoffs? Like, what, what is, what are they about? I, I, Kawhi, I don't, I, I get so t- tied up with the Clippers because one day I'm so high on them, and then the other day, I'm like, oh my god anybody could beat this team like they're just an average team and then the pelicans are so i feel like they're right there but are they going to be sellers are they going to be contenders what what do they do and then last night we had the hornets against the kings the hornets are my favorite team in the eastern conference they're much they're must see tv if you haven't checked out the hornets go check them out they're fun they're fast they're young they play they don't play very big it's good. They they could use a guy like uh, Lamarcus Aldridge. I feel like that could be a great fit for them. Uh, they're they're fun. They're going to be a team to reckon with. They're young. Like I said, they're really young. Gordon Hayward is back. He dunked on somebody yesterday. He on a fast break. He looked really good. Like I said, they've got the best announcer in sports, and they're they're just a fun team to watch. And then we had the Bucks play the Wizards again. We're seeing a lot of this stuff right now with the NBA. A lot of teams are playing each other twice in a week, and we're not really used to seeing that but the Bucks and the Wizards they squared off Giannis had another triple double and he had some remarks after the game that I thought were uh he said I'm a ball player and I'm gonna make the right decision and then he said I'm not like Bradley Beal I don't know am I overreacting am I not overreacting I don't know it was one of those things where it's kind of a shot I don't know if it was a dig at somebody hey I don't know the, the Spurs held off the Pistons. The Pistons are struggling. They've got to sell. They've got maybe Jeremy Grant will be gone, and a lot of team are a lot of a lot of teams will be calling for him. And the game of the night that I thought was the best, kind of the best game of the night, was the Nets and the Knicks. This game, let's talk. Let's let's talk about the other scores. The Clippers beat the Mavs one hundred nine and ninety nine. Nuggets bounce back and get the big, big the big win over the Pacers. Suns come back and win. And the Lakers beat the Warriors. I'll talk about that one a little bit later. But I want to get to this Nets Knicks game. So we all know Julius Randle is having one of those years double double. He had a double double of thirty three and twelve. Then the Nets had James Harden went for went, had another triple double. But this is a game that I want to talk about because this game has a lot of meaning for New York and what New York basketball is, what New York basketball wants to be. So we've always wanted. The Knicks, the Nets, and the Knicks to be good. Everybody wants the Knicks to be good. That's New York. That's a mecca of basketball. I've talked about it on the show. We want them to be good. Everybody want NBA is better when the Knicks are good. And so last night we got our first big preview of it. There was about fifteen hundred fans in the stands, and New York basketball was alive and well. It was one of those things where. Spike Lee was even there. He was on the floor. You know, he was being rowdy. He was doing his his normal Spike Lee things. And late game scenario, Julius Randle got called for a travel. And I don't know, personally, I don't know if it was a travel. Because it looked like when he went up, Kyrie might have tipped the ball. But he didn't dislodge it. So I think Julius Randle should have maybe let it go. And kind of taking it out of the referees, but it's tough to call that. It was a t- Julius was frustrated. He, you know, he he had to be held back at the end of the game. Uh, he was throwing chairs. He had thirty three points. He was having a monster game. And R. J. Barrett at twenty three. That was a good game. And but if you watch that game, there were so many emotions. 
for the game of basketball that night, it was awesome. It was great. This is going to go. People are going to be talking about it. Even though the Knicks lost, they lost. They barely got beat by the Nets. And that's arguably the best team in the NBA. And this is all Knicks fans wanted. Uh, they want it. They want competitive basketball. They want a team that could hold up with other teams. They want it. Somebody that could kind of put their nose in, in the business. They want to be known, right? New York basketball. We all know how much New York basketball has pride. Uh, it, it was just fun to see. It was, it was fun to see Julius, you know, kind of playing as a monster, James Harden playing as a monster. Then Kyrie had a move in, I, I forget what quarter it was, but he put somebody in the spin cycle. He's playing arguably some of the best basketball of his career. And he is quietly, quietly, I don't want to say quietly, going to be in that contention of MVP. No one really wants to talk about it, but Kyrie is quietly having an amazing year. And we all thought he was... After a season of an off season of you know, is Kyrie gonna be there? Is Kyrie gonna do? Is Kyrie gonna be do Kyrie things? Is he gonna mess up the team? We saw him staging the court. He's had some. He had some you know off season things where he was partying without a mask on and all that good stuff. Um. So, they're the Knicks are fun. I think the Knicks are gonna make a push here in the playoffs. I, I had them as one of my teams, one of my favorite teams to, to kind of get it going. Uh, the the Nets, like I said, they're 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 gonna be they're gonna be there, and they're still missing their best player in Cam Durant. That's they're gonna be good. And then I want to get to the Warriors. The Warriors at twenty and twenty, they were frustrating last night. They should have played a lot better, uh, but they played the Lakers. The Lakers were clicking on all cylinders. I mean, they weren't missing last night. They were shooting sixty percent from the field at one point, almost seventy at one point. LeBron. 20 triple triple double he was playing minutes he shouldn't have played i thought last night playing deep in the deep in the game and lakers look good they obviously miss anthony davis but not last night kcp is finally coming around the corner he hasn't played as good as he has did in the bubble where we kind of thought he was gonna be the guy they were without marcus all and alex caruso again montrez harrell though as he come along, 27 points off the bench. He looked like that reigning sixth man of the year. He looked amazing. He played really well. He, uh, I think he had, a, he had a tough stretch of games there right before the all-star break. And he kind of had a wake up call where he was been, he's been absolutely killing it. He's one of those guys that he attacks a basket so hard. He, he tries to break the, the basket every time he dunks. Um, the Lakers need him to do that. And then Kyle Kuzma again, another great game and he's turning into one of these guys that he's kind of figured out his role and he's flourishing in it. I'm so happy for Kyle Kuzma, one of my favorite players in the NBA, if not my favorite, I wish him nothing but the best. And uh, the Lakers are going to need him to play at such a high level, but the nuggets, I want to talk a little about the nuggets. They're so inconsistent, right? They beat the Pacers last night, uh, but Jamal Murray, they've got to get more out of Jamal. I, I've said it. I've said it so many times, but They've got to get more out of Jamal. They're, not, they're just not, he's just not being what they, what, what they thought he was going to be. And I don't know if it's this weird season. I don't know what it is, but they beat the Pacers the night, the night before they had a, a tough loss. That it might be a back to back. We've got a great slate slate of games tonight. Look out. The, the one that I want to see is the Jazz against the Celtics. Those are both kind of underdog teams that, uh, a little chip on their shoulder for both teams. You know, the Jazz, no one kind of believes in the Jazz. And the Celtics are, you know, who I thought they were a little undersized. They're not as big. I don't think they're as good. And then we've we've got a great slate of games, actually. I'm looking at the schedule here. Heat, Cavs is going to be a good one. 76ers against the Knicks. How did the Knicks bounce back after that, that emotional loss last night? I love watching the young Knicks. They're fun to watch. 76ers, obviously, without Joel. Pacers, Pelicans could be a good one. No, I'm sorry. Trailblazers against Pelicans could be a good one on TNT tonight. And then the Lakers against the T-Wolves. LeBron James against Anthony Edwards, who I think is very underrated and should get some love for that rookie of the year. And then we have the, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say the Toilet Bowl. We have the Hawks and the Rockets. Good luck watching that game. I think they're only showing that game in Atlanta and in Houston. No national coverage on that game because we know... <laughs> I don't know how many, how many people are going to be tuning in for that one, ladies and gentlemen. But 
Here we go. So one of my favorite shows that has aired lately has been Last Chance U Basketball. It's one of those it's one of those it's one of those shows that kind of inspire you. They kind of show you a lot. And if you haven't watched on Netflix, there was a Last Chance U for football and it was great. I loved it. I loved it so much. It was a good one. And now they brought up the basketball. It's out of East LA College, and I told you guys to watch it. I was watching the Brownie one. That one's really good. And this, I talked a little bit about that one, but I want to talk a little bit about Last Chance U. So they're a team from East LA College. If you haven't been to East LA in, in California, it's a tough city. It's a tough place to be. They were they weren't very known for their basketball at all until this coach came in. And this coach is a tough, fiery guy. He believes in his guys. He coaches really hard. But he's also, as they like to say, a weird guy. He's like a weird dude. But he knows how to rally his guys. And he's been at the Division One level, local guy. He played for for uh, East LA College growing up. But they have these guys, right, that are obviously – so a lot of you guys that don't know about junior college, junior college is one of those things, especially here in California, no meal plan, no dorms. You're basically on your own. You basically – this is your last chance – that anybody gives you, you survive or, you, you know, it's one of those things where you make it or you, it's a make it or break it almost in a sense. And this show kind of highlights all of it. They take you in and out. And usually it's a, some guys that struggle with temper, with school, with, with just personal life. And this season is honestly one of my favorite seasons. I've watched the football ones and they go, they're in from Mississippi and stuff like that. But they've got this kid called Joe Hampton, who was, if you if you follow basketball at all, he went to Oak Hill. He's one of the top kids in the class. He was one of those kids that they thought was a one and done. He was gonna go to any mid any college you wanted to. Coming out of high school, like I said, Oak Hill, gonna be gonna be there for a semester and then go to the NBA. He was one of those guys. He was he was a guy, and he kind of he went to Penn State, got hurt, towards ACL. I want to say, and then got got into was eating a ton and then smoking a lot he says in the show but he kind of changes his life around and the coach kind of reached out to him and said hey you know or he actually reached out to coach Hampton and said hey coach uh like I need an opportunity this is my, this could be my last chance like can you bring me in and coach always says we're not supposed to have guys like Joe Hampton walk through the door it's one of those things where he's kind of a hothead I want to say as well so they kind of handle him a little different, and he gets mad when he get take, gets taken out. He thinks everything should be ran through him. He's one of those guys that, like I said, he's tough to coach, but he's one of those talents that you kind of have to go with. And it's kind of those things at junior college where you don't know if he's going to show up one day. You don't know if he's going to how he's going to be reacting. Sometimes he just needs to go to the locker room, and you'll see in some scenes where he just goes and throws things in the locker room. That's junior college for you. That's junior college for you. You're you're you're. It's a tough job for the coach. Uh, you're handling so many personalities. Then we have a, another kid named Deshaun Hilger. His mom passed away due to cancer, and he was basically – he lives on his own. The kid basically does everything on his own. He's been on his own. So he's one of those kids. He's a team leader. He's tough. He's he's a good shooter. Uh, he's got a chance to play at the next level. Coach really believes in him, he, but he's also another guy – that's kind of a hothead, and if he gets into it, he gets a lot. Of, he gets into it to the coaches, with the coaches. He gets into the refs, but he's a team captain, and a lot of people follow. It. He's he's a he's a great leader, though. They follow after him, and they get into a little bit with coach, and it's one of those things that he's a great player, and it's literally on him. And he has an awesome girlfriend who is basically his everything. They said he's a very tough kid, and a lot of people would not go through. He's one of the most reliable kids too which is awesome. And I don't want to, I want you guys to watch it because it, it'll tell you more about the kid and you know, what school he goes to. And then they got this kid called KJ Allen. I'm just kind of, you know, going through, going through the, uh, through the roster with you guys. One of the better players. This kid is a stud. He's one of those kids where you say you walk in the gym is like, why is this kid playing here? Like he, why is he not playing at a big D one? Why is he not? And obviously, like I said earlier, some, one of the big reasons is grades. So it, in order to play Division One level, you have to qualify, you have to have grades. If not, you go to the junior college route, you get your grades fixed, you go whatever. You could be a qualifier in a year or two. And 
Kai, Kai KJ Allen is one of those kids that jumps out of the gym. Super athletic, strong, uh, about six nine, strong kid. Jumps out of the gym. He reminds me a little bit of obviously this is a higher reach, but Zion Williamson, who is tough. He's big. No one could really guard him. He doesn't really have a position. He's a monster on the glass. He flies all over the gra- all over the floor, and he coaches describe him as. If you're a coach, this is the type of guy you want. He, he's he's a coach's dream. He does, has no problems. He uh, he works hard. He wants to get better. He wants to get better in the classroom. He he makes his teammates better. He's kind of a soft spoken guy, and but when he's on the court, he's just an animal. He's a beast, and you love to see guys like that. And he's one of my guys that I like the most on the show. And I think he's uh, special. He's gonna be really special, and you could see him playing in the NBA definitely. And they have a kid named Malik Muhammad who's about, I think he's 6'11", I want to say. six. He's a big kid. But he's one of those kids that he knows he's good. He's a starter. And he's one of those guys that needs a little bit of push on his back. And Coach Mose, uh, Coach Mosley and his coaching staff try to push him as hard as he can. But Malik is sometimes just not there. He's Sometimes he'll be... Uh, He'll be right there. He'll be just be, but he sometimes it looks like he's just going through the motions. He's, but when he gets going, he's a great rim protector, great, uh, great talent, just a great talent that, you know, this roster is loaded, but he needs a push on the back. Sometimes he's a little, sometimes he needs to be, needs to be a little bit more motivated. Um, but coach Mosley, like I said, he's a tough guy, uh, kind of went the wrong way. And God, he found God, and he says he cre- gives all his credit to God. He's a great dad. He's a great coach. He's a great role model. He loves these kids. He really does. And it's one of those things where being a former athlete, you have a coach like this. You really got to appreciate coaches like this because there's not many coaches like this. He gave, he, you know, he's got a, he got D1 offers, but he said he really wanted to help kids out. So he went the junior college route because he said that's what God told him to do. God put him in this position. That guy, young gentleman, be good adults and he does nothing but that he's he's one of those coaches that he's firing he doesn't cuss which is awesome he says it seems like he's cussing you out but he's really not he's he has a way of his words and i love coach mosley in this show he does a lot for his kids he sacrifices a lot he's got a family that you know is his support system and coach mosley buys in you got to buy into coach mosley at east la college you guys have to watch this show i'll be talking about it on my show here because it's one of my favorites until I finish watching it. I'm kind of at, I think I'm at two weeks till they start the playoffs, and their goal is to win the state. They've been closed the last two years, and they think this year's a year for them to take that jump and leap to win state. And it, like I said, go ahead and watch it. It's a good show. So there you have it, folks. We talked a little bit about uh, uh, the, the, the remaining schedule for tonight, for tomorrow, yesterday. We've got some great games coming up. Talked about last chance you check it out. It's a great show. Stay locked in, gentlemen. I'm, ladies and gentlemen. I'm bringing my my picks for the bracket. I'm gonna fill it out here live next. Stay tuned. Coming after this brief message. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. and gentlemen this is one of my favorite things to do 
Uh, we talked earlier on the show. We talked a little bit about Joel Embiid. We talked about one year anniversary with COVID. And then we talked about Last Chance You Still to Come Power Rankings and all the good stuff we have in the NBA coming up. But first, here we have live on the show one of my favorite things to do in the entire world is fill out my, my March Madness bracket. So I'm not one to brag or anything like that, but my last bracket. Last year, or two years ago, I'm sorry, because we didn't have March Madness, if you remember, last year because of COVID and all that stuff. I had Virginia. I had Virginia winning it all. They had Kyle Guy, Jerome, Ty Jerome. They were coached well. So I'm not going to give you guys all of my secrets, but I'll give you most of my secrets into how I go about picking my drafts. I think I won the year before that, too. Uh, I have a little thing with my friends where I, you know, a little five, ten dollar buy in. We do a pot and then we pick and you can I do up to three up to three brackets. And I always I always have the same formula for me. It's always most NBA talent and shooting. That's my two. That's my two biggest things. Obviously, that's uh, not giving anything away there. But NBA talent and shooting, that's always – getting the ball in the basket to me is always the best thing. If you can play defense, you know, it's, it's that's great too. But I'm a firm believer in today's game, you've got to put the ball in the basket. So my favorites this year are – the guys I like the most are I love Gonzaga. I love Arkansas. Um, I really, really like Arkansas. I think they're going to make a lot of noise. I like Michigan a lot. Alabama's going to make some noise, I think. Texas is going to make some noise. But I've got a couple upsets. I love Oklahoma State, too. I see them going. uh, I love Cade Cunningham. I love what he does for them. So without further ado, I'm going to pick here live my, my picks. I'm going to start off in the Western region. And, and as you know, we're all they're all all this year is going to be played at Indianapolis. Uh, I'm so hyped up right now. I even played a little hype up song before this. I put a little future, so I'm I, I'm ready to get going. Uh, I look forward to this every year, and it starts on Thursday. We've got the playing games for 16 and uh, 11. So the pl- the first we have Gonzaga, and the playing game is uh six two sixteen seeds, and I don't think they have a chance. So I'm not even gonna look at what teams there are. We're gonna go Gonzaga. I kind of want to put Gonzaga already in my Elite Eight because that's who I like the most. And I've been telling you guys about that. If you've been listening to the show, I've been talking about Gonzaga a lot. I just think they're very well coached. I think they've got it going. So here we go. The first 8-9 matchup. Who do I like? Oklahoma and Missouri. Oklahoma. It's a tough conference. They play a tough conference. SEC's been good. I'm seeing the point differential here. Opponents. They've... Missouri scores 71 points a game. Um, they're 4-2 and two against top 25. The BPI, conference 8-8. Eight and eight. Who do I like more? Here's my first one. I'm going to go Missouri to upset Oklahoma in the first round. So there you have it, ladies. The first upset, a 9 being an 8, which is not much of an upseed. upset. I'm sorry. UCSB, as you guys know, I'm a Southern California native. I I would love to take University of Santa Santa Barbara. Always love the UCs making some noise, but I think creating this too good of a basketball team. Oh, I'm looking at this BPI here. This is uh, Santa Barbara hasn't played anybody in the top 25, so that does scare me a little bit. Uh, the the competition obviously, and this is one of those years where you're not going to play too many top twenty five teams because you kind of stayed in schedule in, in conference, right? But I like Creighton uh, winning this one easily. Virginia, the team that won me a lot of money last year or two years ago. Again, I keep sorry against Miami of Ohio. Let's see here. Opponent scores sixty points against Virginia, so they're good. they're pretty good defensively. They're always coached really well. Uh, he's always got good pros. Guys out of Virginia are great pros. They are, they're always ready to go at the next level. I like, wow, Ohio scores 80 points a game. That I do like that, but I just like Virginia too much. I can't cheat on them from a couple years ago. Southern California got USC against Wichita State or Drake. That's a tricky one because 
Both of those teams are really good basketball teams. USC's tough. Uh, they got that Mosley freshman kid who's a stud in the middle. They obviously go as he goes. I'm going to go with USC. No upset here. So, so far, Eddie, your bracket's kind of boring. No upsets. You know, this is – I'm trying to show you guys my ways of doing it. Kansas, Eastern Washington. How cool would we see the – Eastern Washington football, they have the, the red turf. That's always cool to see. I don't know how good they'll be in basketball. Uh, let's see here, 12-3 and three in conference. Uh, wow, they score a high-scoring team. I'm going to go Kansas. They're just too good. Better conference, better coach. Uh, here's another fun one. Oregon, VCU. Seven versus ten. Uh, Oregon's one of my favorite teams in the Pac-12. They obviously didn't. They lost early. They lost to Oregon State in the Pac-12 tournament. That was an upset. The Oregon's a tough team. They always play hard. Uh, they shoot the ball well. Best uniforms probably in the tournament. For that reason, I'm going to Oregon. Don't give me a hard time. I don't. Te- I don't pick te- teams based on uh, uniforms. But if I did, Oregon would have been my team. Luke. Garza, Mr. Garza and Iowa Hawks. Who do I like here against Grand Canyon University? You know, Grand Canyon University has uh, here in Southern California. For if, if you're in the area, they have all the they they basically run the commercial scene here. Uh, if you want to go to a school, they will basically talk you into going there based on their commercials. They have great commercials, but too bad this isn't based off commercials. I think Garza is too good, too dominant. Uh, he's in the, he's a great kid. I'm going. Iowa. Now let's jump down to the eastern region, Michigan. With the with the big guy down low. They just lost a kid who's a shooting guard. Um, not gonna. I don't think that's gonna hurt him too much. I got Michigan big. It's one of my, they're one of my favorites. Coached by Juwan Howard, they're having a great year. They took two weeks off, you know, because of COVID. Uh, they were affected by it, but I don't think this will affect them much. LSU. Against St. Bonaventure, I want to say. That's the school, right? Uh, SBU. This is an interesting matchup to me. This is one of them that I had circled as an, maybe an upset. LSU puts up a ton of points. But SBU is one of those teams that you kind of have to look out for. And this is where this is one of those that I have to think about a little bit. So I'm going to go through their op- opponent score 60 points against them. Wow. Is that because of their conference, or is that because of uh, what? The, are they just good defensively? They didn't play anybody in the top twenty-five. Top twenty-five. The BPI is wow, twenty-eight to twenty-four. The BPI has been pretty good lately. With judging teams, are eleven and four in conference. LSU eleven and six. LSU scores eighty-two points a game, though. SBU scores seventy and a half. What do I like? Hmm, this is a good one. This is the one that's got me thinking here. This has me thinking. Who do I like here? Oh, uh, this is a good, this is a tough matchup. And if I have to think about it, uh I think I'm gonna have to go. Oh man, Sharif O'Neal. Should I go? This is a tough one, lineage. I'm gonna go St. Bonaventure. Let's do St. Bonaventure. Let's go make some noise, huh? Same Bonaventure, let's go. Colorado Georgetown. This is one I love picking the Pac-12, but this is I have a hard time picking the Pac-12 in this one. Colorado, you know, I don't like I don't I don't know. I like Georgetown a lot. Patrick, you he's done a good job. I'm gonna go with Georgetown. Upset over Colorado. 12 beats a five right there. Florida State, shout out Matt Gruskin, my buddy, high school buddy. He's a GA at Florida State. Told me they're tough. They're built. They're coached well. Uh, they've got dudes. They've got a couple. They've got some NBA talent. I might have some insider stuff on the Florida State. I just talked to my buddy a good amount. He tells me about them. Uh, good coach basketball team. They've been. They've been. Uh, they've been good the last couple of years. I'm gonna go Florida State here. Let's go Florida State. BYU against UCLA or Michigan State. Wow, this is a tough matchup. I like BYU. Uh, but, hmm, BYU's a good basketball team. One in three against top 25 teams. Michigan State's, they always show up in the in the tournament. And then UCLA. I'm going to go with upset. I'm going to go the 11. I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to do that. 
I'm going to do Michigan State or UCLA or against BYU. I like that. I like them more. Texas against uh, – I like Texas. UConn against Maryland. That's a good one. That's a tough matchup for me. I like Maryland a lot. Maryland had a – they were good this year. Uh, good basketball team. But UConn has come around. They've played a good basketball. I'm going to go with uh, UConn in this one. Maryland, that's a tough one. I might come back. That one might be one of my picks where I come back because I do like Maryland a lot. Maryland was a sleeper team for me. I'm going to go Alabama. I own. I got to speed up. Alabama. Let's go Alabama there. So then let's get to the south. Here we go. Baylor, Hartford. I'm going to go Baylor. Baylor is one of the best teams. This is a tough one right now. Wisconsin against North Carolina. Wisconsin, North Carolina, both tough teams. Wisconsin has coached really well. They play tough. They're always a tough team. And for that reason, I'm going to go Wisconsin over North Carolina. Night beats an eight. Villanova. I love Villanova. They always have dudes. They've. They're going to handle business. They always have pros. They're coached well. I'm, I'm very high if you can't tell I'm coaching. I love coaching. Purdue, North Texas. I don't see much of an upset here. Uh, yeah, North Texas, that'd be cool if they made some noise, but I like Purdue. They've, I bet you they've got – I haven't watched I haven't watched a lot of Purdue lately, but I know they have they probably have shooters. They always do. Uh, Texas Tech to, against Utah State. Texas Tech, tough, tough team. Arkansas – against Colgate Arkansas all the way I love Arkansas Florida Virginia Tech that's a that's a, that's one that we've got to watch out for I am going oh I want to go upset here I want to go upset here and I'm going to do it Virginia Tech beats Florida I like Virginia Tech here 10 beats a 7 I like that I like I'm very very uh confident about that pick Ohio State beats Oral Roberts I like that Illinois one of the best teams in the country one of the best players in the country Loyola Chicago are they going to have the nun on the sideline? That's a question. Uh, for that reason, I'm going to go Loyola Chicago. They were fun last the last time. Oregon State Tennessee. This is where I, this is where it gets fun. Oregon State won the Pac-12. Uh, they give up a lot of points, but they also score a ton. And I'm wondering if they're going to get some momentum off of that. I don't think it's be enough to hold hold off Tennessee. I'm going to go I'm going to go uh hold off Oregon State. I'm sorry. I'm going to go Tennessee here. Oklahoma State against Liberty. I'm going to Oklahoma State. Like I said, Cunningham is one of my favorite players and I'm going to go with them. San Diego State against Syracuse. This is a this is a fun one. San Diego State, it's hard to root against them, Southern California team, but I'm going to go coach I'm going to go with San Diego State there. Moorhead State, West Virginia, West Virginia, Clemson, Rutgers. I like Clemson a lot more. They play their tough-nosed team. Rutgers is one of those teams that could make some noise here. And for that reason, I will not take – Ah, this is fun. I like this one. Ah, they were 1-7 against the top 25 teams. I don't like that. That scares me. Uh, Rutgers and then Houston. Houston's Cleveland State. I don't see an upset there. So here we go. Round of 32, Gonzaga, Missouri, Gonzaga. You know how high I am on Gonzaga. Virginia Creighton. Here we go. That, that should be a fun matchup, ladies and gentlemen. We have – oh, man, this is a good one. This is going to be a great matchup. I like Virginia, though. Virginia – I'm riding Virginia from last from the last time they played, from a couple tournaments ago. I'm riding Virginia. I'm riding the Virginia wave. USC against Kansas. Who do I like? Who has the better pros? I'm going USC in the upset, baby. Fight on. Here we go, Trojans. Make me proud. Iowa against Oregon. Who do I like here? Garza's tough, man. That kid's good. Uh, Oregon, like I said, they're a tough nosed team. Who is a team? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna fill that one out. I might come back to. That. I gotta think about that one a little bit. Michigan, St. Bonaventure, I like Michigan a lot. Florida State, Georgetown. I'm gonna go Florida State. Ooh, this is gonna Florida State though. Now they're, they're not gonna, they're not gonna. MSC, I like Texas against Michigan State or UCLA. That, uh, Alabama against University of Connecticut. I like Alabama. Um, let's jump over to the round of 32. Baylor, Wisconsin. Who do I like? Baylor. I like, like I said, I've, I'm a big uh, Wisco- uh, Baylor fan. They're tough on the boards. Tough to beat. Good coaching. Villanova, Purdue. That one's fun. That one's going to be fun for me. Villanova has better pros. Their coach. I keep going back to the coaching. You guys think I'm joking. This is how I pick them. Better coaching. Texas Tech against Arkansas. My team, I've talked, I've talked huge about Tex, about Arkansas riding that Arkansas wave. Virginia Tech, Ohio State. This could be an upset here. I like this one, but no, Ohio State's too good. Ohio State, alrighty. And we have Illinois, Loyola, Chicago. I think uh, they fall short. Illinois is too good of a basketball team. Tennessee, Oklahoma State. Cade Cunningham, that's my guy. I'm going Oklahoma State. San Diego State, West Virginia. Oh, that could be good. 
Who do I like here? Let's stick to the West Coast. I got a six seed beating a three seed. West Coast, baby. A little West Coast bias. I'm going to go San Diego State. I like San Diego State. Clemson, Houston. This is a good matchup. Clemson is a very underrated team. Uh, but Houston's been tough all year. Good basketball team. They're going to be tough to beat. 24-3, and three, one of the best teams. So let's go Houston here. And let me go back to that Oregon against Iowa. This is going to be a good one. Who do I like here? I'm going to go with... Uh, this is a this is one where I could see an upset happening. I really do. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Garza. Garza's too good. So here we go. Sweet sixteen. Gonzaga, Virginia, Zags all the way. I like Virgi- I like the Zags too much. USC against Iowa. Not gonna be fun. I'm gonna I, I, I can't pick against Garza. Garza's tough to pick against. Baylor Villanova. Baylor, I love Baylor. Arkansas, Ohio State. Here we go. What do I think, Eddie? Who do you like here? I've told you guys how high I am on Arkansas. Ohio State's gonna be a, Ohio State's gonna be a tough out for them, but I love Arkansas. I love Arkansas. I'm going Arkansas. Here we go. Oh, Arkansas, baby. Arkansas against Baylor. What a game. Michigan, Florida State. Michigan. I I, I like for Michigan way too much. As much as I like Florida State, Florida State could upset them. That could be fun, and they could, that could be a fall for them. But, yeah, they haven't played enough for me. I like Michigan, the big guy down low. Alabama against Texas, two to two and a three seed against each other. I'm going to go with – Alabama's a good ball club, man. Texas is Shaka smart, man. He, he loves that. I'm going to come back to that one. That's a, that's a good one, but I might go Alabama there. Here we go. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go Illinois against Oklahoma State. Oh, my goodness. I'm torn. I want to see an upset here. I'm going to go. Uh, I told you guys I'm high on Oklahoma State. I really am. I don't think they're going to have to beat Illinois, though. I'm going to go Illinois. San Diego State against Houston. Houston, I got Houston. And then going back to the Texas, Alabama, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go SEC. They're just, uh, how, I don't know, actually. Actually, I'm going to go Texas. Make some noise, Texas. Here we go. I might get some heat for that because uh, once college in Oklahoma, they don't like Texas very much out there. So here we go. It's Gonzaga, Iowa. God, that's going to be, if we get to see that, that's going to be something. Can Gonzaga stay undefeated? That I mean, they're going to have to. They don't have a choice. You know, they're, they're one of my, they scored 92 points a game, though. Oh, my. They had a scare against BYU. They did have a scare against BYU. Ah, BYU. Did I go wrong with BYU? I'm just remembering that. And I took BYU to lose in the first round. I did. Yeah, I took BYU to lose in the first round against them. I'm going back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm taking that back. I'm going to take BYU over... Yeah, I'm going to take BYU over Michigan State in the first round. And then I'm going to go... Te- we all do this. We always go back. And then I'm going to take Texas to beat BYU. No, you know what? I'm going to go BYU beating Texas. I'm changing the so- Big change. I got BYU against Alabama in my uh, Sweet 16. I just totally changed that. Sorry, guys. I just remembered how good they looked against Gonzaga and watching that game live. But they did give it up. But I'm going to go. Oh, I might change that. Sorry, guys. I'm so indecisive when it comes to March Madness. I'm going to take... Baylor against Arkansas. This is going to tell you guys how high am I Arkansas. I'm taking Arkansas over Baylor. I just like Arkansas a ton. Uh, yeah. oh, no, no, that's just tough. No, I'm going to take... Do you guys hear me clicking? It's BYU or Texas. Who would we like? BYU or Texas here? I'm going to go Texas. I'm going to stay with Texas. Texas is good. So Texas or Alabama. I'm going to ride the Alabama wave. And then, uh, and then I got Houston beating San Diego State. So I've got Michigan advancing and beating Alabama. Uh, it's hard for me to pick Michigan. I have a lot of connections to Michigan for whatever you, uh, you'll find out. But, but uh, I got a lot of people screaming to Michigan in my ear. So I'm going to go Michigan. But they, they're they going to fall apart. I, I scare Illinois. Uh, I'm going to go. Illinois has got one of the best kids in the country. I like Illinois. they got the best NBA talent. So my final four, Gonzaga, Michigan, Arkansas, Illinois. Gonzaga beats Michigan easy. And then I'm going to go Arkansas beats Illinois. Arkansas in my final four. No, I'm going to go Illinois. I'm kidding. 
Arkansas is good enough to go in my final four. I'm going to take Gonzaga, my winner. As you guys all know, I've talked about them really heavily. I'm going to think I'm going to go Gonzaga scores 85 in. I'm going to go championship game 85 to 79. 85 79. Gonzaga wins easy. There you guys. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I talked to you through it. I gave you guys my strategy. Shooters, coaching are the two biggest things. Shooting, coaching, and NBA talent. Those are always the biggest things to me. Thank you for tuning into the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be back with my power rankings, my trade deadline, the buyout market. What's it looking like? There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy. If you want to join, find me on. But hey. Good luck on all your seasons. Good luck. Hopefully you guys get it done. And go Zags. I'll be right back after this brief message. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen, where we talk all basketball, good basketball. I filled out my March Madness bracket. That was a uh, tough one for me this year. There was a lot of good teams, and it's a weird year. So I'm 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 a, I'm really on the fa- on the point that uh, because it's such a strange year, there could I'm not I didn't get many upsets this year for me. I had a couple upsets, but not many. And uh, like I said, I like Gonzaga going deep in the in the in the tournament. They're just one of my favorite teams. But let's uh, jump into this uh, NBA talk and all this crazy stuff that's happening. The power rankings and it's almost trade season, which is for, to me one of the best times of the year, just because just because of the fact that uh, it's always cool to see how team how teams adjust and how they get better. Uh, what what they need to do. Sometimes they need to fill some void. Sometimes they uh, want to get off contracts. Sometimes they want to get draft picks. And uh, I'm going to talk about some trades, some buyouts. Uh, it's heating up, so I'm going to keep talking about it a lot more coming on my podcast just because of the fact that it's a big time. This is when teams make a playoff push and uh, teams fall out of the race, so they, they become traders and all that good stuff. But first, let's get into some power rankings for the for the week. <clears throat> I uh, I use NBA. They're uh, they're my probably my most reliable source that I like to use the most and uh, kind of trust them the most. To be honest with you, not the biggest is ESPN guy, but I take bits and pieces from everybody. And uh, yeah, let's see uh, how how it works. Let's see the power rankings for this week. I like. Let's see. So I'm gonna do a top ten. Start. 10 being the worst, obviously. Obviously not the worst, but... So at 10, they've got the Boston Celtics, who last week were at at a 10 seed. Just outside of the top 10, we have the Miami Heat, who I've told you guys is one of my favorite teams, just because of Jimmy Butler. Uh, Look out for them. They're getting healthy again. They're at 11, but they're just outside. But the Boston Celtics are at 10. They had a good week. Uh, I don't... Like I said, I don't... I'm not the biggest. I'm not the biggest guy on the on the Celtics. They're playing against the Utah Jazz today. That'll tell us a lot today about the games. We'll see how they look. I'm going to turn that game on here in a second after I get off of this. But the Boston Celtics coming at ten. I don't think they'll stay there. They're not. They're not my favorite team. Just for a lot of reasons. I think they're small. Like I've said, coming in at nine, they've fallen from fifth place last week. The Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets. Jamal Murray. He is one of those guys who has been so on and off. He's 
you'll have some amazing weeks, some amazing games, then he won't show up in another game. I think he had two points in a game the other day. Uh, they're just not very um, – they're not the bubble nuggets, and the bubble nuggets would have made a lot of teams – a lot of teams, a lot of people in the league thought the Bubble Nuggets were going to be one of the best teams in the league coming this year, but they've fallen. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks coming in at eight. I've said Luka Magic. You know where you're getting from Luka Magic on this show. Uh, he's one of my my second favorite player in the NBA after LeBron James. He's just special. <clears throat> uh, Luka, uh, but but the thing about the Mavericks, I've said Porzingis, 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 and he would. Uh, Mark Cuban was actually on the Ryan Seacrest show today, and they asked him, Ryan Seacrest of all people asked him, are you trading Porzingis? That's kind of the word. And uh, Mark Cuban said, no, I'm not. I mean, he's not going anywhere for whatever that means. Usually when they say they're not trading him, it means they're probably going to trade him, right? It always it always happens that way. But Mark Cuban's kind of a loyal guy, so we'll see how that. The Clippers, they've seven seed. Wow, they have them at seven. They've had a... They've had some issues, like I said. They're just not very consistent. And the closing out games, they've been really bad. They've probably, I think they're the worst team in crunch time with Paul George and Kawhi. They, it's uh, not very good. They're shooting. They shot thirteen for fourteen from the three point twenty seven percent last week, which is not very good. Uh, they haven't really been able to lock down defensively, which I think was kind of their identity last year. Kind of just being able to shut down teams. Uh, Patrick Beverly is a year older, like I said. He, they're not. Uh, I don't know. The Clippers got a lot to Milwaukee Bucks come in at six. Uh, they, they've got some big wins. Uh, you know, they beat the, the Wizards in the triple double the day and uh, they beat the Wizards without Bradley Beal. I just don't know how good the Milwaukee Bucks will be with the Nets. You know, how as good as they're looking and uh, we'll see. I don't know how good Drew, Hol- Drew Holiday, I, one of my, the most underrated guards in the league. They look, I mean, the Bucks are interesting. We'll see, we'll see if they may, they're going to need to make a move. I think of the deadline at five. My Los Angeles Lakers, and I think the Lakers are in cruise control still. I don't. I really don't. To be honest with you, I don't think they really care about what seed they're in. Uh, I really don't. Uh, they miss Anthony Davis, obviously, and they have no Dennis Schroeder. They had no Dennis Schroeder for a little bit. They had. Uh, Kyle Kuzma's emerged, though I must say he's kind of stepped up into that role. Sometimes he's been the, he, since Schroeder's been back. He's you really don't know who the second best player on the team is right now with him and Schroeder. They both been playing really well. Kyle Kuzma, I've talked about his. He's one, probably my favorite. Play, I, I'm a big LeBron guy. He's obviously my favorite player on the Lakers. But Kyle Kuzma's turned into this guy where he's ultra reliable. He he's playing good defense. He can switch. He played good defense on Steph last night. He can switch and guard a big. You know. He's his game has come such a long way, and I'm I'm so happy for him. Great rebounder, he's coming off the bench, and uh, Lakers just need to get Lakers need to make a move. I'll talk about that here a little bit later on my on my trade on my trade uh, segment. I think they need to get a big fast because even when Anthony Davis comes back, we know Anthony Davis doesn't like to play the five. Uh, but we'll see. Utah Jazz have jumped from the four power rankings to the. They're jumped from three to four. Utah Jazz is one and three in March. Uh, they're struggling, and that was one of the teams where I've kind of told you guys, I don't really uh, worry about the Jazz. I'm not really scared of the Jazz. I've never been scared of the Jazz, and obviously I think they're doing great things. J- uh, Jordan Clarkson have a great year. Joe Ingles, uh, they're just not very scary. They don't have a – it's tough to win with a team like that. No superstars. No – there's a bunch of role guys, and I think, like I said – Donovan Mitchell has to take that next step and make the players around him better for them to be, I think, be contenders, real time contenders, and kind of put some fear in some teams. Because right now, I don't think teams are really scared of them. I don't, and they've got a bunch of they've got a bunch of role guys, and I don't think you could win a championship with role guys. I really don't. As good as Gobert is, two hundred million dollar man. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't. They're not scary. They don't scare me. Doesn't seem to be scaring anybody in the NBA either. They're at the four seed. The Phoenix Suns, another team that they're not very good at playing from behind. Uh, obviously, Chris Paul, biggest ad- biggest addition this offseason, who wins wherever he goes, the best leader in basketball. Uh, guy just flat out wins. I think they will be buyers. 
obviously in the trade deadline, I, I like LaMarcus Aldridge for them just because it's a big who could stretch out the floor a little bit. Uh, he's not obviously not, he's not obviously what he once was. Uh, Drummond would be good for them too. <clears throat> They're just not, obviously those two guys would be awesome. But the Suns, again, they need to make an impact here in the trade deadline because I think they do need to get better. They play the the, the Clippers, the Lakers, and uh, one of these top teams in the West. They want to make a deep run. And then the 76ers, they've kind of held on. They've looked good. Uh, the Sixers have won three of the last four games without Joel, even though they were 2-5 and five before that. Uh, he'll be back, like I said, in two to three weeks. I talked about it a little bit earlier on the show. I've said the Philadelphia Philadelphia 76ers just have to float. They have to stay afloat. They have to try to stay above 500, which will be a tall task. Staying above 500. Uh, will they be able to do that? Ben Simmons has got to step up. Tobias Harris has to step up. They have. I must say they have. And these are always weird stretches with the 76ers because they'll play well without like Joel or Ben Simmons. And then you think like, why don't they trade one of them and get something for it? You it, it's this thing always comes up with the 76ers and you always ask yourself like why don't they just trade one of them but Joel is having an awesome season uh banged up two to three weeks like I said just got to stay afloat and we'll see it'll be interesting it'll be interesting to see if they make uh any deals at the, at the trade deadline but look out for the 76ers they've got to stay at 500 with Doc Rivers and at number one the Brooklyn Nets everyone's talking about how good the Brooklyn Nets are for good reason they just but teams are playing them tough defensively they're 25th in the league which is a little scary uh first in offense and uh that's scary because in the post season you've got to play defense they're not gonna i mean they score 118 points a game but they also gave up 113 on defense so that's one of those things is if you can make a stop against the nets you might have a good chance down the line but the thing that's scary about them is their best player is not playing. And can that affect them? And do they have something good going with Kyrie and Harden? They do. And there's only one ball. I've always said that when you get all these superstars on one team, there's only one ball. Somebody's going to have to sacrifice. And those all three are big name guys. And we've all seen Kyrie. Sometimes he could be a little bit of a drama queen and, uh, He's just balling, though. I talked a little bit about it earlier. He's having a great year. He's honestly, he's should be mentioned a little bit more in the MVP race, but I don't know. He's gonna. He's a. He's an interesting cat. I want to see when KD comes back. I haven't made my assumption on the Nets yet. I think they're. I think they're the best team in the East, but I want to see when KD comes back because, like I said, somebody's gonna have to take a step back and someone's going to have to take a cut. So who is it going to be? I don't know who it's going to be. It could be Kyrie. I don't, it could be Harden, but I won't make my prediction on the nets until Kevin Durant comes back. Their best player on their team and my power. And that kind of, I, I agree with that. The power rankings, the nets being the best team of the 76ers. I still have the 76ers coming out of, uh, 76ers are second in defense. I still have the, the 76ers coming out of the East so far. So far, that could change, though. I could uh, end up taking the Nets. Who knows? And it's going to be a fun one to come, coming down the stretch. But we've got some trade. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit of trades again because it's coming around. You know, the NFL the NFL offseason uh, off is underway. They're, they're getting all their trades in. The teams are picking up guys. They're trying to clear up cap space. It's always an exciting time of the year for me. I love trade talk. I always have uh, the Woj shams on my uh, – that alert me when when their trades are happening. And, of course, of course, would it be a trade deadline or an offseason without the Thunder trading for a draft pick? They traded their guy Diallo who – Lou Dort kind of emerged into a player that they didn't know they had out of out of uh, Arizona State. He emerged into a top player, so uh, they could trade Hami Diallo out of Kentucky, who was a g- good young guy. But the Thunder gets Svi Mikhailuk, who was drafted by the Lakers, traded about two years ago, I want to say, to the Pistons in his rookie campaign, and they got a 2027 second round pick. I don't know how many. I can't even. I can't even keep count 
of how many picks that is now for the for the Oklahoma City Thunder, it's got to be close to thirty picks <laughs> over the next next like twenty years or whatever. They've got so many draft picks, but I've got some interesting. I was reading, and of course, I saw that the Lakers called about Myers Turner. That to me is interesting because of the fact that I don't know really. Myers Turner is a hell of a basketball player and he plays for the Indiana Pacers and he's highly regarded, but I don't know if the Lakers could trade for that. I don't know what they would have to do. I'm thinking maybe like Alex Caruso and Horton Tucker and like a draft pick. That's just coming to my head right now. Because the thing about Caruso is he's a fan favorite for the Lakers. Caruso is. But they've got Schroeder who they're probably going to end up signing long long term. And I want to talk about Schroeder here a little bit. So Dennis is an interesting part for the Lakers because he's coming up on free agency. Do the Lakers sign him early or do they wait till the offseason where his price could either go up really high? The Lakers want to see how he plays in the postseason. I think we all do. But he was, he's been good. He's played in the postseason before. It's not going to be his first postseason. It was kind of like, it reminds me a little bit about when Eric Bledsoe got that big contract and he kind of just got lost in the postseason. And the Lakers, I think, are, I don't know if they're scared of that, but it's kind of a thing where you've got to bring that, you've got to think about that. So cause the Lakers are probably going to be in the postseason here for a while with Anthony Davis and LeBron James. So do you sign Dennis Schroeder that long contract? So that's why I think Alex Russo may walk in free agency, which is, a tough thing to say because he's a fan favorite. He's a tough nosed guy. He's one of those guys that we all, that every team needs. Do the Lakers trade away KCP? I don't know, but he's got a no trade clause on his contract. I don't know. So I think Taylor Horton Tucker, do they trade to- Taylor Horton Tucker, Taylor Horton Tucker for who could obviously emerge? I think he's, he's, he's a great young guy. The Lakers didn't even work him out and they traded for him in the draft. They traded into the draft two years ago, and they obviously saw something in him that a lot of teams didn't. And he's got a high ceiling. He scored his career high points and points last night. So, do they trade him and get Miles Turner? I personally would do it, as much as I would hate to see Alex Caruso go and Taylor Horn and Tucker. Those are two guys that I think would fit Indiana's mold, kind of the Indiana way of playing basketball. And uh, that would be interesting for the Lakers because, like I said, Anthony Davis, when he comes back, doesn't he? Miles Turner could stretch the floor as well, but he doesn't like playing. That's his. That was kind of his big thing is he doesn't like playing the five. He doesn't like banging too much. And uh, so we'll see. Miles Turner, that one's the one that popped up. That could be a nice pickup for them. Then the other interesting scenario we have is LaMarcus Aldridge. What do they do? Are I was hearing last week the Boston Celtics, Miami Heat, now they say they're not interested. Uh do they trade do, do the Nets the Knicks go for the, what what's the move for LaMarcus? I think the move for LaMarcus would obviously be the thing about LaMarcus is he's kind of one of those players that's kind of a hybrid at this point because he's not a big man and he can still shoot, but he's not the LaMarcus of old. He's still a little slow on defense. He was never, like, a great defender. But what kind of team would he help? I think he'd really help the Phoenix Suns out, and I think the Phoenix Suns are an interesting pick for LaMarcus because he could sign for a veteran's minimum. They have uh, Aiden, who's a big guy, and he'd kind of stretch the floor at as a four, but I don't know how much. That's that's the one that I that I where I think he fits the best. And then Portland, I've been here in Portland a lot too, but I don't see that reunion happening again. Uh, Nur, uh, Nurkic is coming back here pretty soon. He's getting healthy. They get CJ back tonight. I'm excited for that. They uh, Portland's always one of those teams that they're always banked up during the year. Then they get hot. Then they get hot, they get hot right towards the playoffs and. Dame keeps gets going off. He's the most dangerous guy in the NBA. I've talked about that before. So Lamarcus, I think the best fit for him is the Phoenix Suns. To me, the Phoenix Suns are the best team for that. For that, and then Andre Drummond. I, 
he hasn't played in like three weeks. I hope he's keeping in shape. Uh, no one really knows where Andre is going to maybe end up. The Lakers would obviously would like, want him. The Clippers would want him. I've heard that. Uh, who did, Where does he fit? He's just a big guy that rebounds the ball and plays hard. And uh, I also heard the Knicks a little bit. I heard the Knicks name thrown in there. But would that kind of slow them down and clog the lane for Julius and those guys? And I don't know. that they I guess the Nets are still interested in them. I, I was reading earlier, so he's going to help any team. That that whoever gets Drummond, I think, is going to be the pickup of, unless the Lakers find a way to f- trade for Turner. Uh, but Drummond's kind of the best guy I think on the market right now. He's about he's the best player uh, that could help a team, a contender, just because he big body, pick and roll, could dunk, offensive rebound, and just just makes the teams better. And that's kind of my take for the trade deadline we've got some games underway so far here tonight that i've got that i got going on the utah jazz 24 to 26 against the the boston celtics that's one to watch ladies and gentlemen i that's a game that i i want i'm gonna watch here in the second half to see how they look and then we got the miami cleveland it's not a very good game nick 76ers that's gonna be one to watch look out for that one see how i'm i'm expecting a big comeback from the knicks tonight because they had an emotional loss last night uh, against the Nets, they'll be playing hard. Uh, and then the nightcap, we have the Pelicans against the Trail Blazers. Like I said, CJ's back tonight for the for the Blazers. That's going to be a fun one to watch against the Pelicans, who are I don't know. We don't know what kind of Pelicans show up. And then the last game of the night, we have the Lakers against the T Wolves. I love watching Anthony Edwards play. It's one of my favorite guys right now to watch. And if if you're under the rim, he will dunk on you. He is not afraid to put you on a poster. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. That's all I have today. I'll be back next week with some more NBA talk. We'll, we'll have some NCAA games. We'll have some March Madness going. So I'll tell you how my bracket's doing. Remember, Gonzaga. Remember, shooting, coaching, and NBA talent. That's the key, I think, in the March Madness. So when you're filling them out, think about me saying those three things. If you've got a... If you've got a nail biter, just just uh, I'll tell you how my bracket's doing. Hopefully, I'm doing well, and uh, so you guys can trust me for next year. And like I said, watch the show. Last chance, you. I have an update on that show as well. I'll I'll be watching Bronny's show as well. So, and then hopefully Joel gets getting healthier, and we'll talk some more basketball. Thank you so much for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Hope you have a great night. Hope you have a great rest of your day wherever you're listening to me from this is your host eddie garcia thank you again for listening have a great day. you've been listening to the golden state media concepts basketball podcast part of the golden state media concepts podcast network you can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com download our podcast on itunes stitcher soundcloud and google play just type in gsmc to find all the shows from the golden state media concepts podcast network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program